morning senior squads welcome to thursday morning's s and c session we're going to start off making sure your warm-up area is clear that you have got a drink ready to hand and we're going to get going with three one minute rounds of i am skipping in two one go Stop there, a little break, two more rounds to go. Two, one, go. Finish up normal skipping. And stop. One more round. In two, one, go. And relax. Yeah, the window open. <sighs> okay, how you doing this one, bro? For some reason I can only see on that camera, not this one. Then you go three point C march. So you're gonna go hands and knees on the ground, and then we're just gonna walk with one leg at a time. So C march at the side, lift it up. And rotate it back. And the whole time you're trying to do that, just keeping your back straight. So you don't have to try and get your foot flat on the ground. You're just trying to lift it from the back, twist it to the side, and then go back round. Four of those on each side, into windmills, so back up on your feet. Hands overhead, feet outside, shoulder width. Reach down and rotate, and then slide your hand down your shin. Back 
out. And just keep using your fingers to pull yourself into more rotation. Again, four on each side, keep it simple. Following windmill, we're gonna go streamline toe touch. So, arms on ears, in front of the door. Try to get really close up, so you're gonna have this, a lot of rounding your lower back. as much curve in your back as you can. That way you know you're gonna walk around tight hamstrings and lower backs. Because otherwise you can compensate and just shove your hips backwards to get more reach. Then we'll go ISO scat press into IYCW. So knees off the ground, scat press for two seconds, then IYTW. <laughs> Make a fist. Press up to big ISO. The ISO holds really important because it means you're going to activate all the muscles in the front of your body. Before you then go to IYTW and work the ones on the back. Just twist your thumb up towards the ceiling as you go through the IYCW. Into glute bridge marches. So eight in total. Start with feet close. And the first step is going to be your first one. So one, same place for two, further away for three and four. And then finish off with mountain climb reverse. So three lots of three seconds, max effort, starting now. Five seconds off, three seconds on. Keep your back flat, keep your head down, and then go. And then last one. Go. So today's session is going to focus on core conditioning. Start off with four wall walks. So you still same idea, three rounds. 20 seconds off, off in between exercises. So you can concentrate on the quality of the movement as we start to build the volume back up um, with each exercise. So wall walks, press a plank march, hamstring hold. So you'll need a chair for that. And then the rest I can cover as we go through. So starting off with wall walks, grab a drink, and then we'll get going. In three, two, one, go. Four reps, just get into the inverted position, hold for two seconds, walk yourself back down. <laughs> then 
and stuff there. Then you're going to go press the plank march. In two, one, go. The shoulder set. Lower abs pull tight up towards your head. So six marches on each side. Try to go for a one or two second hold and keep that body position aligned. And stop. 20 seconds off, go into hamstring hold. So no reps up and down this time. You're gonna go up, hold yourself there for 20 seconds. In two, one, go. So hold the position, the first few seconds might not feel like they're doing much. We're more interested in the shapes you can create on the back end of it. And then switch sides. So squeezing as hard as you can through your hips. And relax. 20 seconds on each side. So the hold becomes crucial. And we'll go into bear crawl. In two, one, go. The 12 steps. Just take your time, concentrate on the hold in between reps, keep your back flat into reverse lunge to press. So, holding a weight or a bag, reverse lunge, and as you come back up to the middle, throw the ball out in front and catch yourself. Two, one, go. Down, up, up aggressively. Do six and then switch sides. So the key is to push up aggressively and you know, catch yourself in that top position. The snappier you can make that drive up to the top, the better. It creates more challenge than a slow controlled lunge into our step up and press. 20 seconds off, then we'll go Superman. So with this, hands and knees off the ground if you can. If not, go three point, twist your hand when it goes overhead. Two, one, go. Six on each side, then swap. The other side, try to extend that back leg and then keep your knee off the ground. That way, you're essentially having to push down with your stance hand the entire time. Okay, 
and stop. I get my hand much higher. So you want to try and make sure that your wrist is coming up through the top of your head without shoving your chin forward. Then we've got sit-ups. In two, one, go. So I've got up controlled and then down slow. 12 reps total. Try to do them without my feet pinned. It's back to pin them. That way the downward phase becomes a lot more challenging. And then relax. So you're actually going to do more work in that in those 12 reps, stopping yourself falling down than you are going up. We know everyone's got that in spades. Turn the split squat hold, front raise, finish off. In two, one, go. The same idea as the, the reverse lunge, you're trying to hold that position, so you're stretching one hip, flexing the other, and then trying to throw the ball over your head without losing your core position. So relax, explode, try not to lean back, and always making sure that your wrists end up directly over your head. If your head keeps going forward, and do a slow one for practice. And stop. So mini break. I need up the wall walks. So we're going to go back into wall walks. Four repetitions. In two, one, go. position I'm working on is going up into that invert, sliding my feet down the wall, trying to get comfortable with that inverted position, almost like an L shape. Do that for a couple of seconds and then just slide yourself back up. And should be enough time for the wall walks. A little break. Back into press up plank march. So you might have to lift your hips up to get that even back position. So my normal plank is there, but for the press up plank it has to be like this, so just push hips up a little bit and we'll start in two, one, go. And doing so is going to make your hips work that little bit harder, because you can put them up a little bit higher. So six on each side, two second hold at the end. And if you want, foam roller on the back just to make sure you're holding that lower back position. Then break before we go into hamstring hold. So the full 20 seconds you want to spend off the ground. Just change your leg position if you want to make it easier or harder. And two, one, Go.
the longer you hold it, the easier it should be to, to squeeze your hips. And then swap over. Other side, same thing. And go. And then stop. So again, that conditioning isn't just about having a big burn in your stomach. It's about trying to feel some sort of squeeze and engagement in muscles that you want when you start to get tired. Bear crawl in two, one, go. Again, 12 steps. Make sure your back position stays flat and even. And stop, the 12 steps. One, ideally two second hold before you transition into reverse lunge and press. In two, one, go. Now if you prefer, you could do this overhead and then the hold as a front press. So that'd be like here, go up overhead without punching the lights. Now you slow it down, make sure you stop, you don't have to throw your head forward instinctively. Switch legs. Graceful. So it just means you're going to start getting used to being able to throw your hands from here overhead without compromising your neck. Next one we're doing is Superman. Ready to go in two, one, go. So most of the effort here, concentrate on engaging my lower abs and pushing through my stance hand. And switch sides. Some of you might not get 12 done with the roller on your back, but then that's going to be where most of your key benefit comes from, being able to control your hip position while your hands overhead. And just condition that to happen even when you're tired. Into sit-ups. So load them if you want, go overhead if you want. In two, one, go. So you'll have more to gain if you can do the up bit easy just control your body position on the, the down face back to the ground so if you start to find yourself rounding up that's where you need to take a couple of seconds rest and just accept that challenge of trying to keep your body fully aligned until your head's back on the ground <sighs> If you start to slouch, if you shorten that lever, it makes it much easier. You don't get as strong. Stop there. Then split squat hold, the front raise. In two, one, go. So six on each side, 
if you chose to alternate before, so you go overhead. This one's gonna be a punch. And swap sides. If you're doing it right, you should almost feel like you're having to twitch really hard in your stomach to stop yourself arching. So here. stop. So after weeks of doing split squat holds to concentrate on hip flexors, that becomes a lot more uh, front core dominant. Because if you don't concentrate and you're going to throw it, you just relax your stomach. Whereas you know when you've got your arms and legs moving, you've got to try and hold this where you want it to be. Last round, we're going to go back into wall walks. In two, one, go. So again, my main priority there is hopefully my lower back doesn't round without slipping and stuff. So again, more priority on like core control, body position, than on overhead pressing strength. Give it a go, see how you do. You want to go to the side of your feet down without your lower back changing shape. You just hinge into a right angle. Press up plank march. In two, one, go. Make sure you keep your shoulders stacked over your wrists. Right, last couple. And then 20 seconds off, we'll go to the hamstring hold. So the goal is always to try and have your leg as straight as you can have it without feeling most of the work coming from below, uh, sorry, above your knee. And two, one, go. So if I get it wrong like this, hamstrings feel tight. Straight away all the work starts happening below the midpoint, go a bit closer. We're going to get in trouble for ruining the new sofa cushions, but it'll be worth it if you look at passable demos. So besides, oh, I didn't even need it. So just tipping your hips. So think about electinas, think about flutter kicks, when you're trying to control everything around here. Keeps your pelvis steady, makes it easier to transfer force from that leg kick. Uh, in the direction you want it to go, instead of leaking it through your core and relax. Then bear crawl. Oh, I'm just roll. Okay, two, one, go. So hopefully the session makes you sweat a little bit, but you don't feel like everything's burning up and that you're going to fall apart. So it's maybe a different kind of conditioning than what we're used to. Because in this I'm essentially conditioning my core to stay still while I'm moving. Let's 
stuck. So conditioning is not always about getting really sweaty and working really hard. Sometimes it can be skill based. And then reverse lunge to press. Two, one, go. So obviously you can alternate if you want. Try and mix it up, make it a bit more challenging. Lunge. Just slow it down. Check your head position. And try and synchronize it like we do with the divers. And swap sides. So it might mean that you've got to retract your jaw. Yeah, so that last one was okay. And stop. And so for me, I've got to pull my head back as I do that push for now. Then we'll go Superman. In two, one, go. So again, movement conditioning. When one arm and one leg are out, lower back doesn't move. Or it does. So I'm watching the video. I need to pull my hand a bit higher. Yeah, that's it. Switch sides. So today, that feels like I'm, I'm streamlined well enough. So I'm having to actively pull to find that standard position. Stop. So the great thing about bodies when they get tired, it feels like I'm overextending, but I'm actually perfectly in line. Sit ups. Bit two, one, go. One, two, three, and stop. Last bit in split squat, hold the front raise. Make sure you got dry hands if you punch again in front. Two weeks in a row, I've nearly lost my laptop. Two, one, go. actively think about bringing my head backwards. And then finish after six. Huh. Okay, recovery time. So a post balls to be done as an absolute content on this post but post ball sheet and video are an absolute minimum. Really need to be doing more. Like I've written all the sessions now. Double up on shoulder and hip. So 
So the quads. And then slip forward into hamstring. Hips back and down. Let your knee drift forward, keep your foot flat. Make sure your back stays straight. Three adjusts if you have to. And we'll turn into the pigeon stretch. So let your ankle drop down. Just rely on breathing so you don't want to force a pigeon stretch. And swap sides. That's a bit straighter. And then other side. So quad stretch. Into hamstring, foot forward, make sure you keep your back straight. Do as I say, not as I do. By the looks of things. So put your hand on the inside of your ankle and just sort of gently encourage the knee out to the side. And then pigeon stretch. Not as clever as I thought it was. So as I said, up from scratch. And don't force it, just get into that position, feel the stretch, and then start breathing. Relax a little bit. It took about 20 seconds for my knees to get to the floor, but it happened. Then we'll go lats. So kneeling hinge. So hands to the right, hips to the right as well. Try to separate the attachment points from your shoulder to your lower back. And just start rotating your elbow. And then just start to sit your hips back a bit further towards your feet. And we're going to change it up and do, so we've done a left lat, so we're going to do a left chest, see if it feels different. And then switch over, so right lap, right chest, and done. So hands and hips to the left. So keep rotating your elbow. So we're trying to change our lat length during a stretch with, with movement. So if you do it with more and more stretching, it might tense up even more. Hopefully the more rhythm you can get in that elbow movement, uh, the more relaxed it will feel. And then right chest. So 
to arm recovery movements. Circles with your palm facing down, elbow up. Plant your hand and then rotate to the side. And then done. So make sure you're drinking. Enjoy the rest of your after of your morning, and I'll see the rest of MPS uh, half two. Take care, guys.